What's the most important nutrient on your farm? Well, most people are going to say N, P, and K, but you know what? In many cases, sulfur, we find, is a big limiting factor on farms across the country today, and sulfur is readily available. It's pretty inexpensive. We want to talk about that today. How much do you actually need? How much can it help your farm? Well, the real key here to finding out if sulfur is that nutrient that could give you a really strong return on your investment is to do a good job soil sampling, as we just mentioned with the Ag PhD soil test app. With sulfur, though, here's something to keep in mind. It is one that can move around in the soil. Much like we think about nitrate nitrogen, sulfur is one of those nutrients that if you get heavy rainfall and you have lighter soils and lower organic matter levels, it can move a little deeper in the soil. So if you're doing some deeper soil samples for nitrate, this would be a good time to look at your sulfur levels as well. And when Darren says sulfur levels, what we're talking about, just like with nitrogen, well, not all nitrogen leaches. You've got ammonium nitrogen that doesn't, nitrate nitrogen that does. Well, in this particular case, elemental sulfur, in a lot of cases, that's not going anywhere, but sulfate is. So you got to take a look at what you're applying for sulfur and how that is going to move a little bit. One point of confusion for many farmers is that, well, sulfur is really important for corn, but not as important for other crops. That's the wrong way to look at it. Sulfur is a required element for all crops. So take a look at the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app, type in your crop and your yield goal, and you can see what level of sulfur your crop is going to need. So it's important not only for the grain, but for the stover portion of your crop too. So your crop is going to pull quite a bit of sulfur out of the ground, and it is going to use some of it in the manufacturing of the grain. Yeah, just to give you an idea here, I just pulled up the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app on my smartphone. 60 bushel soybeans need 21 pounds of sulfur. Well, that's a big deal. And yes, corn, if I plug in 200 bushels of corn, that needs 30 pounds of sulfur. So it does take a little bit more with corn, but soybeans still need a lot of pounds. It's not a quarter of a pound, it's not a half a pound, it's 21 pounds for 60 bushel soybeans. So you've gotta have a lot of sulfur in that soil. All right, so we mentioned that sulfur can move around in the soil a little bit and that your crop does need some sulfur. So when is the time to apply it and how do we do that? Well, there are many different types of sulfur that are out there. There's ammonium sulfate, for example. There's ammonium thiosulfate. There's even elemental sulfur. So the timing of the year that you're going to apply is going to make a big difference on which product you select and also what your other nutrient needs are. For example, with ammonium sulfate, many farmers will say, well, I need that ammonium form of nitrogen. That's very stable. I like that. Uh, and I can also meet some of my sulfur needs by doing it at the same time. When we talk about elemental sulfur, the additional benefit with elemental sulfur is it can lower soil pH. So we've taken soil pHs of over 8 and brought them down to under 7 with one application of elemental sulfur. It absolutely can be done. It might take quite a bit. It might be a little bit cost prohibitive, but the point is elemental sulfur absolutely can lower soil pH. So a sulfur, you may apply it several times during the year, much like we're managing nitrogen. In fact, for corn farmers, uh, many corn farmers will put sulfur with their nitrogen, and as they're spoon feeding nitrogen out there, spoon feed the sulfur the same way and at the same time. In most cases, what we would like to see in terms of sulfur in the soil test is 20 to 80 parts per million, somewhere in that range. It's a wide range, I know, but the big thing is that you're not having sulfur deficiencies out in the field. Now, if you start to see some yellow spots in your corn or any crop that you're raising, do some plant tissue analysis. Sometimes you can mistake, hey, I think it's a zinc deficiency. Nope, it's a sulfur deficiency. You're gonna see yellowing on the top leaves on the plant, and that's where you say, oh, hey, that's probably a micronutrient or sulfur, but just do some plant tissue analysis to make sure you know what you've got. Having good sulfur levels is important for crop production, but unfortunately when you raise your sulfur levels, oftentimes you have more weeds, so we'll show you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up next. <music>